everyone. Welcome to Unit 11, Day 2. Today we're going to learn how to graph quadratic functions. Kind of fun. Section 9, 3 in the book, if you need help. Before we get started, we're going to review just a tad. Um, who remembers what the standard form of a quadratic equation looks like? The definition of the standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're going to figure out that a and b and c make a difference as to how the graph looks. Um, let's look at an example. Let's say I have y equals ox squared minus 4x plus 4, for example. Can you figure out what the A value, B value, and C values are for that equation? A is, I don't see any number there, so what is it? If there's nothing, then you better put a 1 on it. B is negative 4, and C is positive 4. Now, how do I find the axis of symmetry? of a quadratic function. Well, I look at the a, b, and c values, and I use them. And the formula for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. And what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with x equals something, and I know that the, at x equals is a vertical line. Okay, So I'm coming up with my imaginary vertical line that's going to be my axis of symmetry that's going to divide my parabola into two symmetrical parts. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in um, my values that I have in my example. So I've got negative, and what's b? Oh, b is negative 4. So the negative of negative 4 over 2 times 1. Okay, 2a is 2 times 1. So the negative of negative 4 is positive 4 over 2, which is just 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 2. And so I'm, I'm going to have a little imaginary line here. And I know this is going to be dividing my parabola into two symmetrical parts. I know the vertex is somewhere on this line. So since it's somewhere on this line, I know the x value of the vertex is 2. Okay? I already know the x value of the vertex. And if I know the x value, then I can figure out the y value by plugging it into my equation. So here I go. If my equation is y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4, let's plug in that x value. So I get y equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2, because 2 is x, plus 4. So I get y is equal to, let's see, 4 minus 8 plus 4. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Then you get y equals 0. So there you go. When x is 2, y is 0. So I can plot that. When x is 2, y is 0, and I find my vertex. Here's the fun part. How do I find the y-intercept? Now remember, the y-intercept is just where x is equal to 0. Okay? That's what y-intercept means. It's where x is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug 0 into our equation. Our equation was y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Let's see what happens when I plug 0 in for x. y equals 0 minus 0 plus 4. So I just get 4. I am always going to get, I'm always going to get that C value. Whatever C is, that's my y-intercept. Right here, that's my y-intercept. Right there. So my y-intercept is um, 4. So on my y-axis, I'm going to plot 4. Bam. Okay. Let's just, for fun, um, see if we can figure out what the y-intercepts are of a couple of, of, uh, of other equations. Let's say I have y equals negative 2x squared minus 7x plus 
nine. What's my y-intercept? My y-intercept is nine. Let's get another one. Let's say y equals um, 4x squared minus 25. Ah, what's my y-intercept there? Is that a quadratic equation? Yeah, it is. It's still in the same form. It's still in standard form. My b value is just zero. I'm looking for my c value. Bam, my y-intercept is negative 25. What if I have y equals x squared plus 4x? What's my y-intercept? Looking for my c value. So my a value is 1, and my b, my b value is 4, and my c value is 0. My y-intercept is 0. Okay? I'm going to show you how we're going to graph. And basically, no, we have all the skills that we need in order to do that. So here's my function, y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. And my first step is to find the axis of symmetry. So let me figure out what my a, b, and c are. a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to negative 5. Cool. Okay, so let's find my axis of symmetry. That's Remember my formula is, is x is equal to negative b over 2a. So let's plug in the values that I have. Negative b is negative of negative 4 over 2 times 1. And I'll end up with 4 over 2. What does this do again? Oh. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 2. I'm going to go plot that vertical line, which will be div eventually dividing my parabola. Two symmetrical parts. Okay, pretend that was a line. Um, oh gosh, I have to make that better. Oh, you guys. Okay. Ah! All right, that's my axis of symmetry. Ish. Okay, now I've got to find the vertex, and I already know since that vertex is on the axis of symmetry, I got my x value. What is it? My x value is two. I just got to find my y value. Hmm. How am I going to figure it out? Well, if I know what x is, I just plug it in the equation and figure out what y is. So my equation is y equals, it's x squared, so I'll have 2 squared minus 4x, so it's minus 4 times 2 minus 5. So let's see. y is going to be equal to 4 minus 8 minus 5. So y will be equal to 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. Bam. Put it right there. Okay, negative 9. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to plot that vertex. 2, negative 9. There you go. You plot it also. All right, now we've got to find the y-intercept. Who wants to do that? Remember, it's just a c value. It's just a c value. So what's my y-intercept? Negative 5. Negative 5. Yay, I love that. that that's, those are exclamation points. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot it. That's where x is 0. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here we go. I plotted y is negative 5. I'm on my way. The only thing I have to do in order to graph this is I've got to find two more points so that I can kind of understand how that curve is actually going. And I'm looking for points that are on the side of my y-intercept. The reason is it's because I already have that point, so I want to keep on building that side. So let's see. So I'm, I'm looking for stuff that's going to kind of be you know, on this side of the axis of symmetry. Okay, this side of the axis of symmetry. So let's see. So I, um, I already know what happens when x is 2. I already know what happens when x is 0, right? So let's go ahead and see what happens when x is 
1. And let's go see it. Go ahead and see what happens when x is negative 1. If I can get those points there, that'll kind of help me form my curve. All right, so let's try. So if, if x is 1, okay, I've got to figure out what y is. So let's see. So I'm going to plug 1 in. y equals 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 5. That'll give me 1 minus 4 minus 5. So it's negative 3 minus 5. I'll get y is negative 8. Negative 8. So I'm going to plot um, 1 negative 8. 1 negative 8. Now let's just for fun use another color here. Let's see what happens. We'll figure out what happens when y is negative 1. Excuse me, when x is negative 1. Let's see. So I'm going to put y equals, let's plug in negative 1. Oh, keep that negative 1 in parentheses. Negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 minus 5. So I'll get y is, what's negative 1 squared? Positive 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 minus 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So 0. So I'm going to plot negative 1, 0. Now I can kind of see how this half of the curve goes. And remember, this is symmetric. Okay? Symmetrical. So, um, I know that if this is my axis of symmetry and I have a point that's one away over here, there's going to be a point that's one away over there. If I have a point that's two, let's look at my blue point, that's two away, so I'm going to have a point just on the other side of that axis that's two away from the axis. Let's kind of go up. Looking at my green point, I know that that's three away from the axis, so I'm going to go three away in the other direction. One, two, three, and plot that point. Now you can see this parabola is forming, so I'm going to graph it, and we're going to kind of start with the, the curve on the bottom, kind of make a nice curve. I know it's going to be a curve, it's a parabola, it's a quadratic, and let's just kind of draw our parabola. It's going to keep on going out just ever so slightly, ever so slightly. Okay, ever, oh, I don't like the way the top part looks, but ever so slightly. Let me erase that. Ever so slightly. And that's my graph. Who likes that? Let's try one more. Okay. I'm going to find my axis of symmetry. So I need to know what A, B, and C are. So I want Y. For A, B, and C. A is negative 1. B is 2. C is what? C is 0. Good. My axis of symmetry is negative B over 2A. So let's see, I'm going to have the negative, C is 2, negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. This gives me negative 2 over negative 2. Oh, this is equal 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Okay, that's my axis of symmetry. All right. So now i got to find the vertex. So I know the, the x value of the vertex is 1. i just got to plug 1 in and see what I get. So I get y equals negative 1 squared plus 2x. Whoops. Plus 2 times 1. Hmm, who does that exponent 2 belong to? Who does that power belong to? The negative? Mm -mm. Just belongs to the 1. Just the 1. So now I have y equals negative. Do that exponent first. Negative 1 plus 2. It's going to give me 1. So my y value is 1. So I'm going to plot 1, 1 right there. Now I've got to find the y-intercept. Hmm, the y-intercept is just my c value, which is 0. Okay, my y-intercept is 0. So I'm going to go to the y-axis, and I'm going to plot 0. 
Looking good. Now I've got to find two more points on the y-intercept side. So I'm looking for two more points somewhere, okay, somewhere on this whole side. Okay, this is the y-intercept side. So let's just go ahead and figure out what happens when x is um, negative 1. Let's figure out when x is negative 2. Okay, I already know what happens when x is 1 and when x is 0. So let's try negative 1. Let's see what our y is going to be. So I'll plug it in. So I'll get y is... Oops, negative of x squared. So it's going to be negative 1 squared. Check out how I handled all those negatives. Do you see why that negative's in parentheses? Plus 2 times negative 1. So y is equal to, let's see, this, two belo this squared belongs to the negative 1. So the negative, what is negative 1 squared? 1. So I'll end up with negative 1 plus uh, negative 2 gives me negative 3. So my y value is negative 3. Let's plot it. Okay, negative 1, negative 3, bam. Let's see what happens when x is negative 2. Okay. y equals negative, negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2. So y is going to be equal to Remember, this two belongs, the squared belongs to the negative 2. So negative 2 squared is going to be 4. So I end up with negative 4 plus uh, negative 4, which is negative 8. So I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah, cool. So now I just have to reflect those points and connect it with a smooth curve. So let's see. So here's my axis of symmetry, and this point is one away, so I'll have another point that's one away on that side. This point is two away from the axis of symmetry, so I'll have another point that's two away on that side. This point is three away, so I'll have one that's three away on the other side. One, two, three, from the axis of symmetry. I can see my parabola. I'm going to connect it with a curve. Parabola goes on forever. Yes, I have graphed y equals negative x squared plus 2x. Looks nice. Well, it could be a little more lovely. But that's the basic structure. I bet you can do this one. I can't wait to see it when you come to class. I'll see you in class.